I'm Sherry Schreiner. Oh, a couple things I want to talk about tonight. You know, I didn't have a show last week because it was July 4th. Figured everybody would out, have their heads under the sky looking at fireworks. And so, uh, we're batting about 50%, I think, in the last two months. <laughs> I know they were sabotaging some shows earlier. Uh, that's just how it goes. That's just... You know, welcome to the blacklist. I've been on a blacklist since 2005, 2004. And so it's really hard uh, to get anything out there. The, the father wants me to get to his people because everybody blacklists you. Everybody ignores you. Everyone's afraid to have you on their shows. Huh. <sighs> And so I've been doing videos, and if I can figure out videos, anybody can. Now they don't look like Hollywood movie productions, but they get the point across. So I've put up about 20 videos in the past since, like, uh, June. I think June, let's see, uh, June 10th. My first video since last year. And uh, I've put up about 20 cents on So if you want to check out my channel at YouTube, just look up Sherry Schreiner. And all the haters are going to come out of the woodwork, and I really don't care. I don't care. I've been dealing with haters for years. But there's some things that never change, folks. And it's the things Lucifer hates the most. And that, you know, when you, when you hear what he hates, and it's been along the lines of what the Father has led you to do for the last 15 years, you know you're on the right path. You know you're on the right path. You know, Christians have this thing where they think, oh, Lucifer hates it. When we all go to church and praise the Father's name. Yeah, he hates it, but all these people are there too doing the same thing. Because they just blend in with you guys. Christians have this backwards idea that anyone who worships Satan can't profess Jesus as Lord. That's 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 how they get you in ignorance, folks. Satanists can prevent can can profess Jesus as Lord. You know why? Because Jesus isn't his real name. I hate getting into linguistic battles with people, but when it comes to using his real name, there's good reasons why you should. Now, Jesus honors people who don't know his real name. He doesn't get all heck bent over who calls him what. He knows what your intent is. But don't put him in the box. You know, don't don't drown in stupidity and don't think Lucifer can play little games around your ignorance because he does every day. So I prefer the real name Yahushua. Yahushua Ben David. That's not so hard to say. You know, that's why people get into these arguments with the atheists and Jewish historians because they look back in history and they've never found a Jew named Jesus Christ. That's because he didn't exist. He didn't exist until the KJV came out in 1611. His name was Yahushua ben David. Yahushua is probably the, 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 the right pronunciation. But we all just call him Yahushua. He doesn't care. But Yahushua ben David... It's probably the 100% correct pronunciation. Yahushua is simply God's salvation. But there is no Jesus Christ. That's Sananda. When people leave the control of the churches and they start going to the Father's feet and asking him directly for the truth in all things, that's one of the things Satan hates and fears the most. 
because he's got control of all the churches. He's got control of what you believe and how you believe it. And all these pastors coming out of the cemeteries are owned by Lucifer. Every one of these these religious seminaries that turn out pastors, they're owned and run by Lucifer's people. They control what you think, what you learn in those seminaries. How far you learn, how far you go. They want to keep you in a little box of the KJV and look nowhere else for truth. I don't know how many Christians I hear call aliens demons. Oh, they're demons. They're demons. No, they're not demons. Aliens and demons are two different dimensional beings. But that's what the pastors tell them because they don't have any other explanation as to who these aliens are because they won't bother to read the first ten chapters of Enoch. Even the first chapter of Enoch. Enoch was included in the Ethiopian KJV version. Why wasn't it included in the American version? Enoch was one of the greatest patriarchs, one of the greatest men who ever... He was known as the man who walked with God. How come the churches don't even know who he is? Yeshua mentions him when he was here. They mentioned Jasher. They mentioned Jubilee. So why weren't those books put in the KJV? And you, and you know what the churches will tell you? They weren't canonized because they, they weren't legitimate books. They weren't found to have authenticity. That's a bunch of hogwash, folks. In my interview with the devil, I asked Lucifer about the KJV specifically. Why was Enoch left out of the Bible? He said, Enoch revealed too much info. It was easier for them to keep out all the books and that, that revealed a lot of info and stick with certain narratives. They wanted the church crowd today dumbed out and stupid about who fallen angels are so that when they pop back up in the last days and they're already here, nobody recognizes them for what they are. Oh, they're demons. <laughs> demons are the spirits of the dead Nephilim. And they were cursed to just roam the earth. That was their curse upon death. These spirits would just roam the earth. And they're demons. Aliens are fifth dimensional beings. And they're not dead yet. They're, they're live beings. They inhabit space. They inhabit bases and cities under the earth. And on planets and star systems around the earth. They're not dead. They're not fathers, but they're not dead. They're fifth dimensional beings. They're Satan's minions. They're his offspring. Some of them are creatures that have been brought over from other universes. The Father said nothing new under the sun ever happens because everything's been done before. So wake up out of the control boxes, folks, and start learning some new things, and don't be afraid to learn. Ask the Father to reveal the truth in all things to you. CERN in Switzerland has existed once before. That's not some new technological feat that they masterfully put together in the last days. CERN has been around for thousands of years, maybe not in the exact same machine, but ones just like it have existed before. When Lucifer rebelled in heaven and took a third of the angels with him, up until a certain point he almost had two-thirds of the angels with him. And the angels fought against him. But guess what was part of his rebellion? People always want to know where Nibiru came from. Pay attention. Nibiru was a planet away from the heavenly system that Lucifer had found, and him and his scientists and his people were secretly going to this planet 
Their idea was to turn it into a sun. Much like they've been trying to do with Jupiter, they wanted to do to Nibiru. They wanted to turn it into a sun, put it in the center of them and, and of their own solar system. They wanted to mimic the heliocentric system of heaven. And Nibiru was a huge planet, so they wanted to turn that into a sun and then have all Lucifer's other planets around it, just like heaven was, have his own heaven, mimic fathers. And so they were going to this Nibiru planet, and Lucifer had found out that he could go through these planets in the north and south poles, that they were all entrances into these planets, and the centers were hollow. And so they built a city inside the hollow part of Nibiru. And they had these huge CERN-type machines. And he started pulling in creatures from other universes with their CERN machine that they had. And he would tag them. And he would implant them and he would control them. And he had them separated into different groups little armies of his own and then when he wanted to pull off his rebellion against heaven he started to pull out all these creatures and all these creature like armies that he had built with this thing and it stashed away and he pulled them out and unleashed them onto the planets that were part of heaven's system and he's going to do the same thing in these last days, he's got that whole same setup going on again, where he's tagging and, and tagging creatures. They use Montauk for that. They have time travel gates in Montauk in, in upper northern Long Island, New York, where they pull these creatures in. And they tag them and they send them back out so they can follow them where they're going. They can find out where the other ones are. And then they can pull them all in and and tag them. Much like uh, tagging cows, cattle, for the fair. Everybody's got a tag on their ear. That's what they're doing to these creatures. And then when they want to bring them all back in, they can bring them back in. Or they can pull them wherever they want to with these these chip implants in their tags and stash them and hide them. And then he's going to unleash them all on mankind. Just like he did before in the heavens. He's going to do it again here on Earth. And it's going to be crazy. This place will be run amok with interdimensional creatures, dimensional creatures, the ugliest things you've ever seen. And that's just his side of things. Father has his own judgments coming, listed in Revelation chapter 9 and, and Joel chapter 2. But he hates people to get knowledge. That's why he wants you to go Go sit at a pastor's foot that's, a, that's accredited by him, which means approved by him, so you can say, stay dumb, dumbed down. You never get any real knowledge of the things that are coming. <laughs> 